Hi, I'm Larry Dignan for Constellation Insights, and we're here with Supernova Award finalist, Carrie Boley. She's a VP of Talent Management at Paraton. Hi, Carrie, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. So I guess let's just start from the top and explain what Paraton does. It looks like you all have some cool projects you work on. Yeah, we are a government services contractor. And really what that means is that all of the work that we do is for the US federal government. We are really a, a national security company is, uh, is a good way to describe the type of work that we do for the federal government. Uh, work on things like launching rockets um, in the intelligence space, collecting and analyzing intelligence data, um, maritime security, IT modernization. I mean, just a lot of really cool projects for the federal government. Uh, we're getting now into space exploration, um, space resiliency. So a lot of uh, exciting projects and exciting work that we do um, really to keep our country and our, our nation our, and its citizens safe. And, and the company was built by mergers and acquisitions? Yeah, uh, well, Paraton itself started as an, um, a spinoff of a company called L3 back in 2017. I joined the company in 2022. And at that time, we had just gone through quite a significant um, amount of M&A activity with um, the IT services division of Northrop Grumman, as well as the um, acquisition of the entirety of a company called Perspecta, which in and of itself was the legacy of several different uh, mergers and acquisitions. So here we are uh, almost three years later and uh, we're about 19,000 employees and, uh, and doing really well. It's a, it's a really exciting time because really, even though we've been around since 2017, and if you can if you count the legacy of all the different companies, we've got people that have like 30 years of tenure, um, but uh, because of years of service, uh, but we're really just um, a young company. You know, so we operate as a young company being only about three years old. As this talent pool built, built um, I recall in your application, you know, you need some way to filter through the talent. Can you walk me through the project and what AI had to do with it? Yeah. So um, like many companies, I mean, there's um, there's a lot of great talent out in the industry, but um, the the market is very, very competitive. And so when you open up a, a requisition for a job, the um, you know, the competition is, is very fierce. And, and we've got some very, very unique requirements that we're trying to fill. So in order to really parse through, really effectively parse through all of that information um, takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so without having something like AI to really look look for some unique information, uh, unique indicators, it's really difficult. Um, the other piece of that is looking for what we call passive talent. So not everybody's always actively looking for a job. Uh, so, you know, like many companies, we're also looking for people who aren't necessarily looking for a new job. And, uh, and AI helps us identify who that talent is, helps us um, look across different, uh, uh, different areas of the internet to find who that talent might be, people who maybe have written white papers, people who have, um, you know, an, a profile on, on LinkedIn or other social media sites, people who don't use social media, but, um, you know, maybe they presented at a conference or presented something really interesting that we may, we may want to get in touch with. So we've got different ways to, to find um, individuals who may be somebody that we want to talk a little bit further with. And AI when did me. when did it hit you? You needed AI as a front end, or, or when, I guess when did it hit you that the scale and of finding talent was challenging? Um, you know, it, in 2022, well, we've worked with this company. Um, we've worked with Seekout for a few years. Um, a lot of companies in the space, a lot of companies across multiple industries, work with companies like Seekout. And it wasn't until um, we we recognized that we needed to have more power than just you know, trying to find this passive talent and that the type of work that we were bidding on in the government was much more complex, much more complicated. And the the level of effort that it takes to um, submit proposals for the government, because that's essentially how we work, um, it was becoming increasingly complex. And part of that effort requires being able to put together things like staffing plans. 
So without having a tool in place to help us that could leverage AI, that could, again, go through large amounts of data in short periods of time, um, it, it really handicaps what you're able to do. And so when we look at, you know, all of the different um, tools that are out there, when we looked at the relationships that we had um, already in place with SeekOut, it just made sense for us to explore some of the um, expanded capabilities that they already had that we weren't taking advantage of. And that's really when we started putting two and two together. And it's like, you know, it just makes sense to, to go further down the road with them. Um, and then in addition, we were also looking at, you know, <laughs> we can bring talent in the door. How does what SeekOut offers also play into our retention strategies? And, uh, and that's where we started looking at some of their other modules around career development and career growth. And it really um, played right into what we were trying to accomplish from a career development standpoint for our employees. It really played right into the data that we were seeing from our employee engagement strategies. And, and it really complemented what we were trying to do and uh, in help our, helping our employees build their careers. So they thought that they had a place to stay with Paraton. They didn't have to go and look someplace else for a job. What were some of the main business metrics you used to justify the project? Uh, turnover is the biggest one. <laughs> so right. retention, yeah, retention. And, um, and being able to ensure that we could keep our employees um, within the company and that we could, so retention is the starting point and then mobility is another. Um, so not only do we you know, retain our employees, but we have a place for them to grow their career so that we can move them throughout the organization. And if we were able to do that, then we could bring in you know, new, uh, new employees from outside the company and staff programs from the bottom and, and help build employees' careers throughout the organization. So, I mean, it's, it really becomes um, a, a, an end-to-end -end process for helping our folks build their careers within the company, starting um, from when they, when they sign on with us. You know, they, they can look and see that, hey, you know, it's not only just this project that I, that I started with or this job that I started with, but, but there are other places where I can go. I don't have to stay in this one position and be here for the entirety of my time with Paraton. I can move around to, to different types of jobs and different types of opportunities within the organization. But being able to um, create the picture that you know we can reduce turnover, we can increase engagement, we can increase mobility and staff our programs internally instead of having this churn of people coming in and, and having this revolving door um, of employees, I mean, those are the things that that are the metrics that our um, leadership team paid attention to. What what roles are most difficult to hire and retain? Uh, in our industry, it's really highly cleared talent. These are the people okay. that are doing top secret work for the government, and there is, you know, this. You would think that it's um, a pretty big market, but it's not. It's a very very small market. Um, there's a number of companies that do the type of work we do, but it's really a very small industry, very small. And so trying to find the right talent to do the work that we have to do to keep our nation safe is, uh, is challenging. And, uh, and that's the, that's the talent that, that we use, you know, our partner and seek out that we use them to help us find. Well, what were some of the surprises with this project? Um, see, some of the surprises was, I, I would say at the beginning, it was really creating a business case that resonated with our um, leadership team. In hindsight, it's like, oh, it makes so much sense to just pick out these couple of metrics and, and that's what everyone is going gonna, is gonna to buy into. But in creating the story that, um, that was a strong business case, and making sure that we had that business case in place is something that it's a um, it is a it is an effort to do that so that you do it well. Uh, certainly not impossible, obviously, because we did it. But making sure that you've got a strong business case so that you can get the buy-in that you need, um, and having a sponsor to to help you with that is incredibly important. And um, and I think probably the most surprising thing for me was that when you have all of those things in place, um, 
it becomes much easier to position a project like this and an investment like this to an organization. What does Seek Out sit on top of? Does it sit on the HR system or, or I guess what, what's it what's it integrate with? Yeah, we integrate it with a couple of different systems. We integrate it with our talent acquisition system, our ATS. Uh, we integrate it with our HRIS system. We integrate it with our learning management system. Uh, we integrate it with, um, it's not really an integration, but we input our career development framework into it so that it understands all of the different uh, job families and things like that. So it really is like a hub that sits on top of all of these different tools and systems so that depending on what we're using it for, it gives us, it gives our employees the information that they need. Um, you know, for example, on the talent acquisition side, I mean, on the career mobility side, like it knows all of our open positions so that, you know, if I'm an employee that's looking for a new role, um, I can see what all those roles are. And because we feed all of our HRIS system, it knows who I am. And because our job families are in there, it knows what, what is next in line for me um, if I were to go on a kind of a step-by-step -step approach. But also because it sits with our on our uh, HRIS system, um, it knows other people who are like me in the company who have maybe gone down a different path and it aggregates that data so that it gives me good recommendations that maybe are things that I haven't thought of before. So it's not just a traditional career path of if I were in finance moving, you know, finance analyst one, two, three, but maybe I want to go into data science and I, or maybe I hadn't thought about going into data science, but because, you know, there's some overlap between skills, between finance and something like data analytics, um, it will show me those different career paths that maybe I hadn't considered before. And so that opens up a whole world of opportunity for our employees. Um, and then it'll also feed me from our learning management system, the type of training that maybe I haven't had that will help me develop in that area so that I become um, upskilled and then can start to apply for those types of positions. What, what are some of the differences between sourcing talent internally versus externally? Quite a, there's a few differences. I mean, internally, we know our candidates. We know, you know, where they're coming from. We know the types of projects that they've worked for. Um, you know, we know what their performance has been on. So, you know, they're a known quantity when we're sourcing candidates internally, um, you know, versus externally when, you know, it's we, we don't have that level of data. Um, there's not fidelity in the data on that individual and those um, candidates that are um, out in the uh, um, external to the organization. So it's, you know, when we're looking for, especially for positions that are more strategic, it really helps us to be able to source internally when we've got so much more data on our employees and on the individuals that, are, that we're trying to position for those types of roles in the organization. Um, from an external standpoint, you know, looking at can candidates externally, um, there's also, you know, if they're, if they're posting for a position with us, they can also be posting for a position with, you know, five other companies. So they're, uh, much less committed to a position than somebody who's already within the organization. They're already on our payroll. They're already getting our benefits. So their, um, stickiness, if you will, just doesn't exist. So from a value proposition standpoint, if we can source our candidates internally whenever possible, then um, you know that's, that's what we want to be able to do. Now with a company like ours where growth is part of our strategy, it's not always possible. Um, it's not always desirable, but when it makes sense where we can do that, that's um, part of our strategy. What, what advice would you give uh, HR leaders going into AI? you have to go into AI. You don't have a choice. <laughs> it is it is part of our future. Um, one thing that, there's a couple of things. One is that um, AI is gonna be one of your best employees. Um, it's going to be a, an employee. Um, I use AI a lot because I have a very lean team. So I use AI in a couple of different ways. When I'm going through a lot of data, when I'm trying to develop a new training module, when I'm looking for ideas on um, how to further a strategy, um, I use AI because I don't have the people resources to do so. Um, AI also helps me with my team in terms of giving them new opportunities. 
So there's really a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of ways to apply AI uh, that we hadn't thought that we, you know, haven't been doing traditionally in an HR, um, in an HR role. So it's not just for the tech folks that are out there. It's really for all of us to take advantage of. And, and honestly, if you're not ready for that yet, um, it's really time for you to start doing some research, reading up on it and time to get ready for it. Otherwise, it's you're just going to be left behind. All right. Thanks for joining us and congrats on being a finalist. Thanks so much.